Hello again, Akron fans, and welcome back to this replay cast between Vikran and Kron Abrams on Cordova. Vikran is in the top left corner playing CISO, and Kron Abrams is in the bottom right corner, presumably playing Grekum, but I don't know yet. He is playing Grekum! Okay. So, both players are getting themselves set up, getting their economy set up, and Cordova's map we have not seen in a very long time. Much more popular around. Well, pre-1300, basically it was, and even then, it was almost made, it was made as a four-player map originally, and then turned into a map that was used for doing some economy testing with having really large bases, but having them really spread out so that CISO couldn't hyper-expand too much. But then that's been, obviously that kind of became less prominent as we changed other parts of the economy. So now it's got quite different. So the main bases, like I said, the top left, so the northwest and the southeast and the main bases, then there are expansions towards the east, the south, the north, and the west. And there's also some expansions in the center of the west, center east, northeast, and southwest. And Vikran in the IRC channel saying, oh, it's this game. Yeah, apparently. I, I don't know what this game is like. Apparently, it was one that was on game replays. It looked like it might be interesting, and I hadn't seen Cordova in a while. So I thought, well, why not? Because Cordova is a neat map. So Cronenberg sending his duo over to the east expansion, very quickly taking that. And it looks like he's going for a very similar tactic he did on hills, which is to set up a bunch of RPs around the map, with Octos all around the map, trying to use them sort of as ways of seeing what's going on. And he's actually walking his stride all the way to the center east expansion. This is certainly an odd thing to do. Now Cordova is the largest 1v1 map, it's the largest single two player map. Because, like I said, it was designed for trying to get expansions that were really far apart but really big at first. Obviously, the expansions have been, made, have been sized down quite a bit since then. But still, that was the original idea. And the Arcticus is also being sent over towards Vikran's base just to see what's going on in the meantime. Vikran, on the other hand, is sending a Special Ops and a Marine over towards Kron Amarant's base. It looks like he's going through this expansion path, so we'll be able to see Kron Amarant moving his duo over here once that actually propagates to where Vikran is. Vikran, by the way, is about a minute ahead of Kron Amarant. So Kron Amarant right at the present of the 226 mark and setting up his expansion, though like I said, I'm not sure how solid this expansion is going to be, but setting up his expansion over towards the center east expansion. And it looks like, no, Vikran will actually not see this coming. Vikran will not be able to intercept this. He may be able to see that something is different while the green time wave comes along. But he certainly will not be able to intercept this. So Cronaman is in a good spot right now. He has gotten his expansion pretty much for free. Vikran has not spotted it yet. And Vikran, he is getting up his main base, saturating it quite well. He has not himself set up an expansion, but I don't expect him to. He's playing. What I'm surprised about, he has not set up an importer yet. So he is not going for his standard rush strategy, which is a terrible idea in this map, by the way. Cordova would not support that by any means. So... Getting his importer, probably going to get a second importer and then a couple factories. And then from there, start building up ATHCs. Maybe Lancers, but I kind of doubt it. ATHCs are much more what Vikran tends to go for. But I'd be interested to see, I'd be surprised if we went for ATHCs. And here, sorry, for Lancers. And here's one of the factories going for Proxy Factory. Very good idea. Or would be if more for the fact that Kron Amarant isn't even focused on his main base. He's focused instead on this center east base. So Kron Amarant actually... Still going to be vulnerable to that proxy, but not as vulnerable as he would have been had he stayed in his main base. Now, as Arcticus is still maneuvering along through the cityscape, getting towards Vikaran's base. So we'll be able to see what Vikaran is doing for about five minutes into the game. Or no, not even then, by six minutes into the game, the Arcticus is almost at the base. Not even quite there yet. So Vikaran getting gate tech. Holy crap, getting gate tech right away. I have never seen a CISO player do this. This... What is this? I don't even. A macrofab being built up proxy as well. This mech's going to be used to build probably teleporters and chronoporters from this proxy location that Cryonbird has no real stake in because he's not worried about it. He's not even anywhere near there. He's never going to see this until it happens. And I can't believe I'm seeing this. I've never seen Gate Tech rushed by CISO. By Grekum, yeah. Grekum always went for chrono rushes all the time back in the day. But CISO? Yeah, here, here's that early chronoporter just halfway built and... This is gonna be this is gonna be good. I mean, seriously, get your popcorn and folding chairs. This is gonna be good. So Cronaberon has got himself a bit set up in the center east expansion. He is getting a proxy duo even closer to Vikaran's base. Looks like he's going for this rolling expansion across the map. 
course, like I said, barely leaving any trace within any of the expansions he's in, but still, a rolling expansion. While Vicarin is building up this gate tech, building up his Chrono Porter, building up his Macrofabs, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm waiting for the teleporter. I really am. I don't know where that is, but I'm waiting for it. So, Chrono from his point of view, he, well, he can't see it yet because he doesn't have any units nearby. Doesn't have an Octobot, however, not a bad idea. And looks like he is trying to get this northeast expansion. So Cronavern is trying to do what Vicarin used to do on most maps with CISO. That is just expand around the map like a virus. Now, Grekum is good at this. It requires a bit of a base for it to actually work, otherwise you're just gonna get taken down once your opponent figures out what you're up to. But if you can if you can get away with it, if your opponent doesn't notice this happening, Grekum can spread very well. However, that being said, it would appear that <laughs> I think Vicarin figured out something's up. He sees the main base is only one LCRP and not much else. So I think he's probably gotten somewhat wise to Cronomerant not being in his main base, probably assumes the Center East expansion, so that is the nearest major expansion. And he is not acting... No, he is acting on it. He is actually assuming that. And he assumes correctly. <laughs> he's going to go for the Center East expansion, and Cronomerant is going to be hard-pressed to defend against this. Not terribly hard-pressed, mind you. He does have the Octos being built up, and he should have an Octo ready in time for that Special Ops to come in. I think he won't see it, though. I think he'll go for progening, so he can still use it. And it looks like... Did Vicarin just miss that? I think Vicarin just missed this expansion. I think he went up to check the expansion happened. I don't think he saw it. No, I don't think he noticed. I think he actually passed it by and just barely did not see the expansion there. Wow, okay, so I think, though Vicarin is watching this game right now, so you can confirm from what he was playing at the time, I think Vicarin does not know this base exists. I think Vicarin is completely in the dark about this. He probably assumes that it's somewhere, but he checked this, and I don't think the Special Ops... I think it was just outside the Special Ops vision radius. So yeah, you know, he's checking down here. He is not sending out an army to that base, although his army isn't really built yet. It's based on that proxy over in the bottom right corner, but... Yeah, I don't see that. I, I think he actually doesn't know. So, Cronhammer, like I said, he has his expansion going. This is what we saw before. And now Vigrin jumping towards the 7 minute mark. Seeing Faro coming in from that proxy duo. Dealing some damage to the LCRPs, but Vigrin already has the money he needs. He already has the tech he needs. Not much of a concern. Vigrin jumped back, by the way, about 3 minutes from that point. Just double checking that proxy and jumping back again. Not sure if. No, he still has not seen the expansion. And Cronhammer is. Oh, it looks like Cronaberant is actually setting up. Is he setting up his Arcticus over here? No, he's not. But Cronaberant, his flying his Arcticus around, just seeing what's going on, and decided to change his position, flying it around towards the west side of the map, double checking there's an expansion there, which there is not. Cronaberant is expanding a lot more than Vicarin is. I never thought I would say that, but I did. Cronaberant is expanding more than. Someone is expanding more than Vicarin. This is a thing now, apparently. So Vikrin does see this expansion over here, so Vikrin is taking out bits and pieces of Kron Amarin's RPs, but he's not taking out the main base, and like I said, not aware it exists as far as I know. He does, however, have this, and he will be getting a proxy, I think he's getting gate tech, he'll be getting a proxy macrofab and Chrono Porter fairly soon, although I'm curious what's going on in the present, and see here, he does not have, at the present, anything useful. He is getting attacked by the Octobot and Faro in the present, he's going to have to worry about that. And other than that, I don't really see much going on here. Oh, and this RP is... Looks like it might be leading... It's leading to the northeast base, and it will actually be leading him straight to that base if he's not careful about that. Not sure why he's moving that RP around... No, sorry, the Special Ops is going around there on its own. Never mind, it's not... He's scouting out with the Special Ops, trying to double-check where the bases are, so he will be able to find it eventually. And where is that Marine? That Marine is damaging the other LCRP in Cryonomer's main base. So Vicarin scouting around, see what's going on, and he will probably find, he will eventually find this. But this RP is slowing him down quite a lot as he is following it as it goes. So this Special Ops will eventually find this, but it will be way too late once he does. That being said, Vickery will have a Chrono Porter. He does have a Proxy Chrono Porter, or will. He keeps going back to before that happened, and it looks like, no, it looks like he's not even going for that anymore. No, he's aborted that. <laughs> so much for that, I guess. Yeah, he's decided to move all that into his main base instead. His factory macrofab and Chrono Porter all in the main base. So he can attack anywhere down to the five minute mark or so. Though we won't be able to attack with much. He's getting a mech, getting... This is what we saw before with his main attack. 
I'm a little bit surprised you didn't go for the proxy, just didn't stick to it and keep a better timing. But no, he is more committed to defending his main base. Not a terrible idea, it's just the timing is a little bit off now. So getting that Chrono Quarter built up, getting the Macfab up. A bit surprised he has no teleporter yet. And here come the Pharos. We'll be able to destroy the mech, no problem. And where is that? Here are mechs. Marine is coming in actually around trying to get rid of what's going on here. And the Special Ops will be destroyed by the Octo. At this point, Vikran, I'm sure he knows that there's a base here. I don't see how he couldn't possibly know. And he also has... Okay, his Chrono Quarter is up. It is getting its first charge going. No ETHC has been built yet, though. Or Mar Tanks or anything. So Vikran, I'm not sure why he isn't building anything. He has the Chrono Energy to do so. At any rate... Arcticus is seeing this Marine going down, and then the Marine going over like here, getting all these LCRPs. And the Special Ops is going towards the main base, going towards Crown Emirates base. It might be able to confirm it, and will it see it? I think it will. It has, yes, it has enough health. It will see it. So, Crown Emirates base has finally been revealed to Vicarin, and now certain that there is a base here. He knows for sure there is a base here. Has some Mar tank, probably send it back to the six minute mark and use that to attack. But I don't know, because this is going to be kind of tough to pull off for Vikran. He is in a tight spot right now. Crown Amber doesn't really have more map control, but he does have a better position on Vikran. Though Vikran does have that Chrono Border, and that is kind of scary. But Crown Amber is taking out Vikran's QPRPs. His base in general, Vikran's got a lot to deal with right now. And he's still good. He does have enough QP to do at least one Chrono Port, And he could use that to help deal with this base over in the center east. But I don't know. It's going to be tough. So Vikran, however, is aware of what Karnabrin is up to. He knows everything going on there. He knows everything he needs to. He may not know that he knows everything he needs to, but he does know it. Setting up his Mar tanks, and here we go. Here's the attack. We'll be going in about the 636 mark. Oh, 650 mark, actually. And it is going for an attack straight to this base, and this will be a good timing. This will actually work. Although, it'll be a, we'll see what happens once the red time wave here comes along and propagates it over. But yes, that will be a good timing, and Crown is aware his Arcticus does see what's going on. He did see that the Chrono Porter was rotating, although I think Crown Armor, he'll have to look over that again to see that the Chrono Porter was actually used, because Crown Armor didn't actually notice that. He's a bit ahead of when that event happened. So, Vikarin may have the upper hand right now. This red time wave, like I said, coming along will be the one dealing the damage, and here's that damage coming in. Crown Armor is going to be hit by another uppercut. Vikarin sending back another set of units, about the 7 minute mark or so. Or planned to. I actually didn't turn out to do so. Not sure what happened there. Anyhow, Vikarin's Martanx coming in, taking care of this Octopod. One of them will... No, they won't die. The Octopod's retreating to the Reefs. And that Reef is getting heavily attacked, and Crown Armor can't actually do anything about that right now. So this Reef will be very handily destroyed, but the other Reefs are going to be in a good position to deal with this. However, once again, they're not in range of the Octopod, so... Once it gets to the playable pass, it will be a bit of a problem for for Vikarin. Vikarin, however, prepping to Chronoport again, and not in the first person. Oh, it doesn't have Q-Plasma. So, Chronoport hitting those Q-Plasma RPs actually has paid off decently well, but I think we might, we may get to Paradox Country. I'm not certain. Yeah, we, we are, no, we're going to get to Paradox Country. Yep, this Martank dealing the damage it can deal, all the damage it can deal. And the units that had come in to deal damage to this QP before... By the way, Crown Armor also has Crown Board, he managed to get it as well, further in the future. But yeah, those units that had damaged the QP before are not actually here to damage the QP once the Red Time Wave comes along. So Vikarin is... Vikarin is now in a good position. He does have his units coming in and dealing with Crown Armor's base, and Crown Armor not able to actually Crown Board back, double-checking the Crown Board as it occurs, getting his own Crown Board back to try to deal with the QP RPs regardless of those units not actually being there. This is still Paradox Country, but it might work out. And we see yet yeah, more Chronoports coming back, more Martanks coming back to help themselves out. And it looks like he's just double-checking to see if Chronoport has anything else going on. Not a bad idea, but I think Vikarin is going to go for one final push on here. I can't seem to do much more beyond that. This one Chronoport is going to be annoying, however. And it may cause some problems for Vikarin in terms of his ability to Chronoport beyond this, but I think that Chronoport... He's going to try to defend as best he can, and he is actually able to defend quite a lot with some base class units from the future. Not certain how consistent this will be, and there's still this ATHC attack down here, but Crown Armor will be able to deal with this. Like I said, 
It's not consistent though. As just, if you look in the timeline, it just dropped off the timeline. So this Corona Port is not consistent. It's definitely in Paradox Country and Corona Port may want to try to, I don't know, repropagate it or something because it's going to be kind of tough to deal with. However, he was able to stop this QP from existing for now. So Vicarin floating a lot of cash, wasn't able to spend it before and should be able to spend it now. I think he's going to be just getting more Mar tanks, Corona Porting them back even further and using that to try to try to make this work. Make that final push actually work in Cronabert. As well, it looks like he is not able to make that Cronaport totally consistent, so it is it is Paradox Country. Which is kind of unfortunate, because if that Cronaport had been had been like not as far back into the past, it wouldn't have been Paradox Country. It wouldn't have been Paradoxed out, and it looks like it doesn't even matter though, he's building a bunch of Octopods with this state. He needs to send them back though, he needs to actually send them back and make sure to deal with this. Make sure to properly defend that base, because Vikran right now has destroyed this base. It's gone. It's completely gone, and Cronamert hasn't done anything about it yet. He has to Cronaport back. He has to make sure this works. He has not gone to make sure that this timeline remains stable. And as a result, I think he's going to lose the game. So yeah, this green timeline was carrying Cronamert's loss of the game. He forgot to... So yeah, very important tip. When you go back to save yourself and you risk Paradox, make absolutely sure that you go back to save yourself. And then once that happens, when you're sure you have a consistent timeline that you saved yourself, then go for an attack. Then don't Chronoport. But at that point, that, oh man. So Vikran, well done to him. Really surprising, I did not expect that. Sisu never builds Chronoporters anymore. I am so glad to see this. I am very happy Vikran did this because I've not seen this in the longest time, and CISO Chrono Rush is just totally new to me. I'm happy to have seen this. I'm happy to have casted this game. So that was really cool. So that's the game though. Cryonamer is surrendering, and that will be it. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And that's about it. I think there's not much else to say about this game, except Chrono Port Ho! Anyway, that's going to be the game for now, and I will be seeing you guys all later!